Let's talk a little bit about livestock budgets. Essentially, livestock budgets are the same with a few small little tweaks to them. And it all starts back with the premise I said earlier. The question is, do you know how to farm? Because the first step to developing your budget is understanding how to farm. For example, most livestock budgets will have a budget for cold breeding stock, right? Cull cows. There's a revenue item for that. Do you even know what that is? If you don't understand what that is, maybe you need to do a little bit of research on how we, how we produce livestock. What ends up happening is we have a bull, we got a few cows, and every so often one of those cows is unproductive. So what do we do with that cow? Well, she has to go. We're going to send her off to the market. She's going to become hamburger meat. Well, now you have one less cow in your herd. What do you do? Well, you've got to replace that cow. How do you replace that cow? There's basically two ways. One, you can buy a heifer or you can take one of your heifers that you've just produced and bring that one into your breeding population, your breeding stock, turn it into a mama cow by breeding it with a bull. And so what we oftentimes see when we look at a cow-calf enterprise budget or a small ruminant enterprise budget is that we sell fewer female animals. So typically we're going to sell all of the males that are born and some portion of the females are going to get held back as replacement heifers. And if you don't hold them back as replacement heifers, then you've got a budget for the fact that you're going to be buying heifers. You want to do some mix of both just for your livestock genetics? I'm not an expert on that. Again, you might want to learn all you can about basic livestock genetics before you start doing this. As I mentioned earlier, oftentimes the unit for a livestock budget is an individual animal, an individual cow. Now, what do we mean by a cow? We mean in a dairy operation, it might be the milk cow. In a cow-calf operation, it's the mama cow. We might use a typical herd size or a typical flock size. It's not at all uncommon to do that for our enterprise budget. So we might do a 50 cow per year budget or a 100 cow per year budget. And when we're doing this, we have to keep in mind that there's different production stages for livestock, like with cattle. In the state that I'm in, we are what's known as a cow-calf state. We have a lot of cow-calf operations. These take at least nine months because that's how long it takes for for a cow to gestate. We then raise the calves to somewhere between 450 and 650 pounds and we sell them and from there they go off to a feedlot. So a feedlot budget is going to look different than a cow-calf budget. And if you're running a farm to table enterprise where you've got a cow-calf operation and you feed out your steers and your heifers, then you're going to have a really long production process and so you've got this long time frame and you've got to account for that in your enterprise budget. As an example, swine are very different. Uh, hogs can have multiple litters per year. Much shorter production process if you're running these kind of animals versus running cattle. The other issue you get is you get multiple products. I mentioned that just a second ago. You're going to have culled cows that you're going to sell. You might have milk that you're going to sell. You might have calves that you're going to sell. All of those are going to happen in a standard dairy operation. Some of the cows aren't productive. We're going to cull those. The cows are going to have calves. The steers are going to get sold. We might hold back some of the females, the heifers. Sheep, same thing, right? You can sell lambs. You can sell wool. You can sell the culled females. Other things that might not be so obvious, but really should be whenever we talk about livestock budgets, is how do we account for our facilities? For example, fences, feeders, your water source, and any storage for, say, your feed or your hay, these are all items that are going to depreciate. And it's important that we make sure that we keep that in mind. Yes, you can depreciate your fences on your taxes. Did you know that? Because fences, they wear out. They're a depreciable item. So we got to make sure that our budget includes, either as a direct or an indirect cost, things like this. And those facilities have a lot of different type of costs associated with them. If you're running a dairy barn, there's going to be electricity. There's going to be repairs. There's going to be fuel for heaters and that kind of thing. And of course, all of the various ownership costs. So we don't want to overlook these. And these are things that might not pop up in a crop budget that might pop up in a livestock budget. You're going to have a barn of some type if you have livestock. You need a barn of some type if you have life. And remember to prorate across enterprises. To learn more about enterprise budgets, click right here and I'll see you on the next one.